Hello Sows, I'm back again, <clears throat> finished my clean up and I'm going to do a fairly quick video today because all the um, muck is playing havoc with my sinuses and throat so I'll attempt to um, get through without coughing. So these fabrics here are the ones that I chose to cut up in the shop to make um, the Dresden plate packs because I saw this nice range and I thought they would look good together. Um, unfortunately, with all the rain and the flooding and everything else, I hadn't been able to package any yet, but I'm going to attempt to do that today. And if I get some done and I can get into the shop this afternoon to drop them off, I will. If not, that'll be something for tomorrow. So you can have as many different colours as you like. This just happened to be the range um, in that lot. Uh, for this size, which comes from the Aki Quilt die, you need 20 uh, blades or spokes, whatever you want to call them for the Dresden plate. And if you do the smaller size, which I decided to have a go at, um, this one uh, takes 12. Now, this is another die that I have at home, so of course I've had to cut some of those for you as well. But I'm also going to cut some of these in some, uh, some of those scrap fabrics I have. So these are from my leftover snowball and some these were from the scrap pack i think and these were left over from some that i got from Ange. and these ones are some fabric and i made these a few years ago from i think it was a mother's day present from aldi and i'm going to show you with these a problem that i did i don't know if you can see it if i put it against something dark a little bit of thread sticking out there on every join of my spokes. Um, I did that because I put them together not quite right. So I'm going to show you today what to avoid. Now, I've got a tool here, um, came with one of those quilting magazines, but anything that's got some sort of point but not too sharp will be handy for this one. And your iron. So I'm going to move these ones and give you an idea of the things you can do. Now there's a very good um, video. I think I like Stuart Hillyards the best. And I've tried doing this a number of ways and either just finger pressing those together before I sew because the first thing you need to do is sew a quarter inch seam across that wide end so you fold it in half make sure those notches are matching and then you sew a quarter inch seam there now obviously that's going to be a little bit floppy you'll need to press pretty hard the best thing I found is to flatten it get your iron and iron it to around about there and we'll sew a couple and I'll show you why. And you can chain piece all of these. Um, I think I chain pieced hundreds of them. <laughs> but I won't be doing that today. So I'm just going to do a couple of different colours to show you the process. Because believe it or not, I think this is a good beginner block. So I'm just going to do start with two colors and I'll finish this one off later now the center of your Dresden is generally a circle which is um, appliqued or um, turned or done with the same color on the back and then you cut one circle and turn them out but when I was thinking about this I thought well why not leave the center open and finish the edge with uh, rickrack or braid or um, bias okay so I've got four ironed and I'm going to pop them under and do my quarter inch seam I'm not back stitching I'm just going straight through I'll chain stitch these 
if you wanted to you can um, reduce your stitch length a little bit but I didn't find it necessary so I'm just doing four so I can show you what they look like Now, as always, I would recommend if you're doing a lot of colours and you want them in a special order, lay them out, take a photo with your phone. Now, I just snip them apart and I don't worry too much about those threads. So I know it's pretty hard for you to see that quarter inch seam, but that's what I've done. Now, when I did the quilt that I showed on Facebook, I snipped all these corners off before I turn them out. That's not necessary. Now here's the reason why that ironing is a good process. When I turn this, I get this little tool and just gently poke that corner up and make sure that seam is flat inside. When I fold this down, I actually have a crease, which you probably can't see, but there is a crease from my iron right in the middle where and I just make sure this seam underneath is neat which is why I find I don't need to trim that off and my seam I'm going to match to that crease which you probably can't see so then I know my point is centered and then I'll take my iron and press that down and that's all there is to making the um, blade and then again if I'm doing this just in two tones poke it through with my finger first use my little gentle pokey tool my scissors are a bit too pointy I've actually managed to go through a few of my points now I haven't snipped the corners remember but you do need to make sure that that seam inside is flat and again I'm going to match that center seam to where I iron that crease. The crease only needs to be about the distance of that seam, so I'll hang on to that, put it under the iron, and then you just keep on going, and you have a whole lot of blades. You've got notches here, you match them up, you turn them over, and you do your quarter inch seam. Now I'm going to change um, colors here because I generally just use a, a neutral thread. So I'm going to get a dark one. I've got a brown one here. So I've got two blades here that, which I folded over and pressed. They're slightly bigger than that, but the process is the same no matter what the size is. So I'm going to put the dark one on top so that you can see why I said I made a mistake with every single one of these and have that little thread hanging we don't want that so what you want to do is put your blades under and start stitching not right at the edge but just down here two or three stitches in and then do one or two stitches and back stitch and come back down again that way where you cut your thread you will not have it hanging over. So now I'm going to back stitch. When I get to the end, take my back stitch off. Just make sure my edges are matched. Now this is one of my leftover blades that um, I cut years ago when I still used to cut by hand and it was cut with one of these I don't um, use those anymore because it's um, too intense for my poor old arms so hopefully you can see on this dark one now on the back you won't see it very well but I can cut that thread off the back one on the light one and it's not hanging up at the top so on the back here I've got 
a little bit of thread caught under and I want to pull that through so hopefully you can see there where that thread is going to finish so there'll be no little tail hanging up here where I don't want to see it because let's get that off when you sew down your Dresden plates you want this to be nice and neat because generally what you do is you put it on top of your other fabric and you can sew by hand or machine, straight, zigzag, fancy stitches. And if you don't have that horrible little thread poking out there, it's a lot neater. So you can see, let me get a dark one, another one of my old spares. No thread poking out on that one, but on these... On every single one, I've got that horrible little thread poking out, which is going to be a nuisance. I've got to turn under, get rid of every time I get to a join. So you can avoid that. So then once you've got your blades together, sew them in pairs to start with. And then just open up your seam. This is one where all of your seams are better pressed open. And I do like to do the usual, press them. You can set your seam first. I'm just doing this quickly for you. And then that's what your pairs will look like. Obviously, this end is where your centre is going to be. And that's your point. And from that, you get a nice, neat point. Now, this is the size of the one that you will have. From the ones I've cut out from this one I've chosen four fabrics and I have it in pairs and you can see the seams at the back are all ironed open and I've avoided those pesky little strings by starting a couple of stitches down going back and then coming back now what I'll do is I'll join the pairs and then from the pairs I'll make the whole block and then your whole block of course is going to look like this little one now, obviously, you could do a little one and you could put a little one on top of a big one and have them layered, but doing it that way, you wouldn't see it, but you can do it that way. Now, I have ones I've been playing with, and when I've actually done something with them, like made them into a cushion or put them on something else, I'll post a few videos on Facebook. So hopefully I'll get some of these into the shop either today or tomorrow ready for you to have a go. It is simple. It is easy. And I'll do some things about the centre later on. Thank you for listening. Bye.